Okay, Qtron men. Um, uh, in terms of how does the, the fact that there's multiple possible effects to one cause uh, destroy objectivism, capital O objectivism, it depends on what you take objectivism to be, what, what the strong parts are. I mean, even if two people took objectivism to be the exact same assertions, the fact is new facts and stresses and social structures come in that have to be analyzed by this philosophy. And so some th things have to give and some things you, you know, don't have to give, and it's sort of personal choice which things you gird up is really strong. Now, do you think objectivism is about the analytical uh, truths, the so-called a priori or metaphysical truths uh, of uh, Aristotelian logic? Okay, or is it more about the no nonsense, there isn't any such thing as a free lunch uh, empiricism, right? Okay, because these things come in conflict, okay? So when you hear, oh, well, there's multiple possible outcomes. Uh, some people are like, that doesn't go because they see how the logic doesn't work with that. There isn't if then one of these possible things. It's if then, you know, A then B. It's not A then one of these possible things. And that's a very important lock in logic. Now, I think it's a very useful thing, but it's somewhat arbitrary, just like Aristotelian logic is first order logic, and we have second order and fuzzy logic, all other kinds of logical systems which are also useful and interesting, applying to what? The real world, which to me puts the emphasis on the empirical part of this. Uh, there isn't any such thing as a free lunch. It's sort of a materialism that has in, in, in its base a law of conservation. Okay, And this law of conservation seems to branch out into principles of relativity and why you know we don't have full knowledge, uh, various things. So, if you want to go in the direction of we can always make the, 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 the um, most sensible decision, then you have a difficulty because it depends on how you define sensible, um, you know, right? So I think that we can make sensible decisions and those mean probabilistically viable uh, propositions by the probabilistic, by the measurements, you know, by the probabilities we can come up with, the measurements we can come up with. In other words, it's all just, you know, it's very ad hoc. It's like you do the best with what you have. There is no perfect best. Now, little o objectivism, even more than capital O objectivism, is all about there being the ability to choose one best, one perfect way. Now, it, you know, there's room sometimes for alternates, functionally equivalent things. But those are considered irre ir irrelevancies. Right. In most questions, there should be, you know, one answer. For most input, uh, states, there should be, from all input states, there should be one output state that will result, um, you know, or a series of one, you know what I mean, one at a time, one turning into another, fine, but, but one. Now, some objectivists, uh, little and big O, uh, admit that, yeah, well, there, there, there is that in principle, but we never know that exact thing. All of our things are imperfect approximations of that, and that's basically a platonic mode, right? That there's one perfect and we get imperfect copies. Our limit is that we can't get the one perfect. And relativism, okay, and which is, you know, relativism being a part of skepticism, you know, there isn't one perfect. You know, our, sure, our models are imperfect approximations of something, but it's not that it's just one thing. You know, if I come up with the solution, it's an approximation of the ideal solution that's similar to what I've solved, but there's still other alternate ideal solutions, right? And these solutions can be incomparable um, or comparable. They're comparable if they have elements that can be measured empirically against some, you know, sense perception that you can take in a particular situation and compare them because they require the same situation and so you could compare on that based on that same situation or else they're in different situations and you really can't compare them. And that happens in physics and it certainly happens in the macroscopic world of mankind in which, you know, a question of love cannot be answered by math and a question of math cannot be answered with a philosophy of love. So, um... Yeah, how does that destroy objectivism? I don't know. I've heard a lot of objectivists complain about these implications. You know, there is another uh, set of problems from relativity, right? Because in relativity, you have something even such as simultaneous events. Whether two events are simultaneous depends on your frame of reference. Now, there is an out there, though, and I think that's less of a problem for objectivism of, of either kind, of any kind, in that uh, this it, it's... it's uh, 
different, but it does relate, right? So uh, if, if I know the rest frames of all the particles, I can calculate from my rest frame how it will appear to them. I can stay in my rest frame and figure out, ooh, you know, a hap event A happened before event B for this uh, rest frame, event B happened before A in that reference frame, and mine it's A before B. You know, I can calculate that out, and so that sort of saves objectivism. But the, uh, the idea that you, one cause can have multiple effects, it's like if I let go of, of my uh, passion orange guava juice here and drop it on the floor, you know, uh, it c might break or it might not. You know, a classical objectivism or a Newtonian uh, classical model approach to that was no, it is going to break. It's based entirely on stresses that are existent in its state now, and am I dropping it, and so forth, and, and I, I can't predict, but it will do one or the other based on how it has dropped. But in the quantum thing, there, there's uncertainties. There's uncertainties as to exactly when, on the quantum level, it's released. And because these small effects can build up, it might change its drift just enough to hit that stress factor that it already has or not. So, um, yeah, cheers.